I really think that this coronavirus is gonna like fucking be the end of us all, man. Like I was just like, <sighs> I just realized, man. Like I was just like, you know, trimming my fucking beard, and I was just like, I've lost so much shit in the last four or five months. Mickey fucking rules, by the way. I've lost so much shit in the last few months. People. Like, friends. Fucking, you know, people being quarantined. Not being able to do what I usually do. And it's made me become so much fucking... At first, it was like a roller coaster. It was like severe suicidal depression, then fucking anger, and then fucking mania, and then just fucking, like, you know, uh, anger, and then suicide, and, like, you know, all this shit. But I think I'm reaching a level now where I'm just becoming, like, this fucking stone-cold bastard where it's like... I think we're going back to, like, ancient Viking days, like, where we're starting to just... Like, we've lost so much that we're starting to depend more so on ourselves for our own survival. Single individuals, and less as a community. So the whole concept of, um, you know, it's easy being awesome, try being nice. I think it's being completely thrown out the fucking window. Because now I think it's like, no, I've lost everybody. So now I got to do this shit on my own. And when you get to that level. You know, it's very easy to be chi and chill. But at the same time, it's very easy to fucking snap. And just not give a fuck about anyone. And just because it's just you now. It's just you. And I'm definitely more fucking hardcore now than I was five months ago. Five months ago, I was more cute. You know, loving, nice, and I'm like, I'll fucking kill you. And I could give a fuck. Like, I just totally snapped, man. Like, it was way too fucking cold in my house. Because <sighs> fucking, we live in this weak-ass culture where everybody's got to fucking have air conditioning and shit. So, like, fucking, like, the AC was running nonstop, and I'm like, and I got to the fucking point where I was like, is it fucking cold outside or something? And, like, I got my window open, but it's so fucking cold in my room, I'm like, I can't even fucking, like, I can't even fucking feel the difference. So I finally went outside, and I realized that it was, like, fucking 85 degrees out. And, like, why is it so, f it, it's fucking warm as shit outside. Like, why is it so goddamn fucking cold in my house? So I finally fucking went downstairs and fucking shut that goddamn AC off. Motherfuckers. I hate this fucking culture. You know, like when you live in a third world country, they don't even have fucking air conditioning. Because everybody's so goddamn poor. There, there it fucking goes again. <sighs> Motherfucker probably turned it back on. God damn it, I want to fucking kill people. Such weak motherfuckers. I hate weak people. I... You know what I realized yesterday? I was hanging out with somebody that didn't have their shit together because I was trying to help them out. And when I was with this person, I realized something. And I, re I realized that like nobody likes to be around somebody that doesn't have their shit together. Like if you don't have your shit together, people realize. They pick up on that shit. Nobody wants to be around somebody that doesn't have their shit together. One of the reasons why so many people fucking gravitate towards me is because I have my shit together. I'm confident as fuck, regardless of fucking, like, borderline personality disorder. Or, like, underground, like, bipolar. Or, like, fucking, like, whatever the fuck I have on top of all that shit. I have my shit together to such a fucking degree. people that don't have their shit together they're just fucking weak it's like get your goddamn shit together learn time management study your shit learn about nutrition fitness learn about eating healthy 
do the fucking work. Learn about psychology. Stop fucking whining. And stop fucking gravitating towards other people to fucking love you and fix your goddamn problems. <sighs> spitting today. I love fucking spitting. You know what really pisses me off? I have to fucking stop drinking. I hate that shit. I love goddamn drinking. You know, yesterday I had one beer because I really wanted to fucking, I really wanted to fucking drink. And I went to fucking Walmart and I was about to buy beer and I was like, no, don't buy beer. So I came home and there was like beer in my fridge and I had a goddamn beer. And as soon as I had that beer, like immediately for the next four hours, I'm not fucking with you, man. It like hit me that fast. For the next four hours, I was depressed. And I was like, fuck, god damn it, man. I can't even have a fucking beer anymore. I'm so goddamn sensitive to that shit. Like, I'm so goddamn sensitive to fucking like alcohol or stimulants or fucking like depressants. Like, why can't I just be a normal fucking average human that could get fucking obliterated on fucking alcohol and just like wake up the morning and be like stupid dumbfounded and have no fucking reserves you know like obviously they're still gonna be like a little down because they drank fucking like 15 beers the night before but they're not gonna be like obliterated fucking depressed like I am or suicidal like I am average fucking people god damn those lucky sons of fucking bitches People always wonder, you know, they're always wondering why I want to fucking kill average people. Because I fucking, dude, it's just like, god damn it, they got it so fucking easy. Not only do they have it easy, they could fucking drink as much as they want. And they don't get fucking suicidal the next day. Those lucky bastards. <laughs> Seriously, man, I'm not fucking with you. God damn it, it fucking pisses me off. Because that's all I want to do is drink. Like, I fucking love that shit. I love fucking drinking. That's all I want to do. I just fucking want to drink. Like, like I would rather fucking drink and be drunk and, like, be Ernest Hemingway than be sober. Uh, unfortunately, Ernest Hemingway killed himself because I believe Ernest Hemingway was bipolar. And I believe, yeah, no, I know this for a fact. His, his granddaughter was bipolar, too. She lived out in the country. She couldn't fucking function properly. So she lived on this, like, horse farm. And she was, like, an actress and all this shit. And she always got these gigs and wrote, and all, you know, wrote books and shit like that. Because she was, like, Hemingway's granddaughter. And, of course, when you're somebody's famous fucking granddaughter, you get whatever the fuck you want, you know. So she had a shitload of money. Probably she also had money from her grandfather. So she, like, moved to this horse farm, and, I, and she was bipolar. I, I read this article that she wrote about, like, her being bipolar. And uh, somebody told me that she killed herself, like, two years ago. And I was like, fuck, man, really? I didn't, I didn't look it up. I didn't want to look it up. I don't, I don't want to know if she, you know, Hemingway's granddaughter killed herself, too. Because she was bipolar, she probably did fucking kill herself. Because she was, she was older than me. She was, like, 45, 46. I'm 42, so she might have fucking done herself in. I swear to God, man, the older you get, the easier it is to fucking kill yourself. Ain't no question about that shit. Because you just get fed up. You just get fed up with this shit, man. You do. You just like, get so fed up with this shit. And, like, everything becomes a trigger. Like, you get just pissed off at everything. Like, I get pissed off at fucking air conditioning. I want to fucking kill people because of goddamn air conditioning. I get pissed off at weak people. I think the harder and harder you have it, the more pissed off you get at weak people. Because you're like, you weak fuck. <sighs> like, honestly. And that's like why you also get really pissed off at people that don't have their shit together. Because you're like, I have to do so much goddamn fucking work. Every goddamn day. Just to not kill myself. And you you can't even fucking put in the effort to have your shit together? Oh, I seriously want to fucking kill you, dude. 
I think everything starts to piss you off, honestly. Like, I, like you know, not to be that grumpy old man, like, get off my lawn type shit, but, like, I think, like, the older you get and the more shit you've gone through, the more shit just pisses you the fuck off. Because you just, you look around, and you, like, and you see people that, like, obviously aren't trying, and you're, like, <sighs> like, Really? You know, like, uh, I got this major issue right now. Like, my niece is into all this fucking, like, shit that has to do with fucking, like, gay shit. Because, like, she came out of the closet. You know, my niece is gay. And, like, so she's, like, she's into all this, like, shit. Like, these shows and movies and all this shit that's, like, you know, gay-friendly, but it's, like, funny, ha-ha comedy shit. Like, kind of, like, Will and Grace shit, you know? And it's all, like, fucking, like... It, it, it's all, like, the stupidest shit possible. And I'm like, I try to watch the shit she's watching. Like, I watched this stupid fucking show last night. And it was just like... And, like, I see that she's on, like, season two, episode... Episode two. Season two, episode two. So I'm like, alright. My niece is into this. It's like a Netflix show. Let me give it a try. So, like, I watched, like, the first episode... And it was nauseatingly shitty. Like, the fucking show sucked. And it pretty much gravitated on, like, you know, shock value shit. And, like, making gay shit funny. And, like, being, you know, it's, like, cool and it's the fad now to be gay. It's like, okay, it's great that you're gay. If you're gay, congratulations. Like, but... It's like... Like, it's like... I don't get it, man. It's just like... I just don't fucking understand it. Like, I'm so cool with gay people, it's fucking ridiculous. I've been cool with gay people for as long as I know. I'm from fucking New York. I, I was, like, born and raised around, like, artists and musicians and actors and shit and actresses, right? So, like, I've been a part of the gay community for fucking forever. Hence, like, this shit, you know? I'm totally down with, like, gay people, and I support them 100, but, percent, I don't want to fucking be one of these people, but, but, like, you know, like, I fucking support them, but it's, like, all this new stupid-ass shit, where shows constantly feel like they need to make a joke and make it light, and I think it, like, it just makes it hokey and gimmicky and stupid. I hate gimmicky shit. I really fucking do. And I feel like the gay movement right now is getting really fucking gimmicky and hokey and stupid. If anything, it's like subtracting from it. It's like taking away from like the power of it. Once something becomes cute, it loses its power. There'd be like the Black Lives Matter movement trying to be cute and funny and hokey and gimmicky. People are being put down and killed or beaten up in the streets for being gay. The way to solve that, you could solve it through ha-ha humor Netflix shows, but you could also solve it by being like, maybe we should try a different approach. Other than this, like, ha-ha, gimmicky, like, let's laugh about it on Netflix shows. Making, like, gayness cute and funny. Why don't we try, like, a different approach? Like, you know, we're gay, and if you fuck with us, we'll slit your goddamn throats. <laughs> that probably wouldn't work either. But, like, you know what? Once something becomes cute and gimmicky, people take you less seriously. I know this for a fucking fact. Because, like, every time, like, I try to be cute, people lose respect for me. But every time I show myself as, like, a confident person that doesn't take shit from nobody, people start to respect for me. They might not like me, but they respect me. I'd rather have people respect me than to like me. I stole that from a basketball coach, but it's fucking true. I'd much have people respect me than like me. Because if you just like me, you're just going to fall off anybody. Anyways, because I'm just a fucking entertainer for you. Like, if I just become an entertainer for you, and you just like me, and you like my channel or whatever, and I'm just this fucking hokey cute entertainer, 
eventually you're gonna get bored of that shit and you're just gonna fucking fall off. But like, if you respect me and you find this message meaningful, you'll be like, that person, not only do they have their shit together, but I respect them and I find what they're doing meaningful. But if it's just cute and gimmicky, eventually you'll fall off, you won't watch. Or eventually I'll, I'm just this fucking entertainer and dancer for you. Dance, boy, dance. I once said all entertainers fall off at some point. All people with a gimmick and all entertainers fall off. You either lose your looks, that's for you fucking like Sammy Marie fucking Grimm. You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> Borderline personality, sort of gimmicky, fucking whatever the fuck you are out there. God damn it, man. I should have fucking ripped you apart much more. Well, I'm going to fucking rip you apart now. What you're doing to our communities is, 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 is a fucking atrocity. And you know that shit. And you and your fucking boy Brian, you're running this fucking like gimmicky fucking reality TV, TV show just to fucking get views. But you're not helping the community. You're not sending the right fucking message. You're wrapped up with fucking getting money and looks and getting more views from showing off your goddamn body. One of my borderline personality disorder friends, she was just like, yeah, but like, you know, we are very sexual people. So I could understand like her showing off her body and like, you know, doing that shit. But it's like, who's that fucking helping? If you want to do that shit, do it in your own time. Or do it to your fucking boyfriend. Don't you... It's like, if you're not fucking helping, what the fuck are you doing? Get out of the fucking way. And if you're rotting people's brains, then what the fuck are you really doing? There's so many goddamn problems in this fucking world, and you're adding to them. By sending the wrong fucking message out? Are you fucking joking? Everything you do fucking matters. Everything you do goddamn matters. Everything you fucking do matters. Nobody gets that shit. The images that you show, they matter. They stick into people's brains. They stick into their subconscious. A lot of people don't understand that. Like what you watch on Netflix or Hulu or fucking YouTube, that shit sticks in your brain. It sticks in your subconscious. It's real shit. Saying the wrong things or sending out the wrong message, it is going to impact people's lives. Like, sometimes I come across too angry or too aggressive or too homicidal on this program, and I try not to be. But sometimes things are really fucked up in this society. And the way people don't understand our community, you and I, that shit needs to fucking change. The way people accept us. The way people care about us. How they reach out to us. The reason why I wrote that fucking chapter, Cockroaches, is because that is the fucking legit truth about our culture. They see us as goddamn cockroaches. There's so much stuff that needs to be talked about. And so many people are focused on the wrong shit. They're focused on making money, being famous. They're focused on owning shit, buying materialistic shit, owning the right couch, impressing other people. Looking a certain way. Owning a nice car. Living in comfort. Having air conditioning. You know, a lot of people don't understand this because they haven't traveled yet. I've lived in nine third world countries. Nine fucking third world countries. I've traveled or lived in 21 countries around the world. When you leave your fucking culture and you live in people that live on 98 cents a goddamn day, you start to understand shit. When I lived in Thailand, I lived in a culture that lived on more than 98 cents a day. Each individual, they live on 98 cents a day. Two-thirds of the planet lives on 98 cents a day. So when I lived in Thailand, and I was a real fucking badass, I still am. Fuck you. I'm still a goddamn badass. I always will be. Because you want to know why? Fuck you. That's why. Matt Damon. Thank you very much for that line. You're a badass. He wrote that shit, by the way. Goodwill Hunting. Good fucking movie. So, 
When I lived in Thailand, I took on a dog, and the dog was sick as fuck. Like, its intestines were coming out of its ass, and there were, like, flies all over him, and flies all over his ass. And, like, the dog was dying, and he was my fucking dog. I fed him every god, I fed him chicken every fucking day on my way to school, on my way home from school. And he was like a street dog. There's millions of street dogs all over Thailand. There's millions of cats all over Kuwait and in you know, other countries in the Middle East. Every fucking country has a different animal that's a street animal. You know, I think in Pakistan, my, my one buddy, she lives in Pakistan. I think it's like cats in Pakistan. In Kuwait, it's Pakistan. I, I'm sorry. In Kuwait, it's cats. In Pakistan, it's cats. In fucking Thailand, it's dogs. In Vietnam, it's dogs, right? Most third world countries or second world countries, they have a certain animal breed that lives on the street in that culture, right? So in Thailand, it was dogs, right? So there was this one dog. I fed it every day, and it was dying because it decided to have sex with another dog, and the dog's penis got stuck in, in my dog's you know, whatever. And as it tried to pull out, it pulled my dog's intestines out of her body. Actually pulled the intestines out of her body. Because the dog's penis got stuck. And TMI. So, so, uh, so I was coming home from school and, you know, I could see that she was dying. And there just happened to be a vet across the street from that 7-Eleven. There's a shitload of 7-Elevens and fucking... Thailand, by the way, and uh, there's a lot of weird shit, like Sri Lanka's in love with KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Thailand's in love with KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and 7-Eleven, <laughs> KFC is a fucking monster around the world, man, you, you wouldn't believe how fucking popular Kentucky Fried Chicken is all over the world, it's fucking weird, so, uh, so I, like, me and this other guy, we picked her up. And we carried her across the street, and we put her in the vet. And I didn't make much money in Thailand, man. They don't pay teachers much money there. You're, you're pretty much living in Thailand to teach there to be, a, a, you know, just for the experience and for the, the, the culture and the nature and the beaches. And um, so, so I had pretty much no money, man. I mean, like, and my entire paycheck went to fixing this dog's life and saving her life. And then I took her in, she, she became my dog, and uh, just feeding her, paying for the medicine and everything like that. And f between the medicine, the vet bill, and feeding her and feeding me, I lived on 95 cents a day for five weeks. For five weeks straight, I lived on 95 cents a fucking day. So I beat the two-thirds world average of 98 cents a day. So the whole world, two-thirds of the world, that's not fucking white. Fucking white people. I'll fucking slice your goddamn throats, you fucks. I hate white people. You know, I was a world history teacher for five and a half years. I was a history minor. And all I learned about in fucking college was the atrocities that white people fucking committed against other fucking people. And when I was a world history teacher for five and a half years, all I taught about was fucking the atrocities that white people committed because of fucking greed and the fucking association for fucking power and manifest destiny and religion, Catholicism, Christianity. You're right now. Maybe. But the shit we fucking done to people. I, dude, I am fucking mortified to be a white person. It's like there's something, it's like there's this fucked up chip in our brain. That like, we always have to be better than everybody else. Like we always, we don't care about tan people or black people. We don't care about fucking nobody. It's because we're fucking white. We're so goddamn privileged. It's like, we always have to be better than everybody. Like we always have to take over their land. We always have to say they're wrong. We always have to say that we're, they're savages or they don't have a soul so we can fucking enslave them.
you know, and I've spent way too many years around the world, way too many fucking years around the world to fucking put up with fucking white people. <laughs> They're fucking air conditioning. You know this whole fucking black shit going on in this country? Like, I think they have the right to come up to me and slit my throat. Just for the shit that we've done to them for the last fucking 450 years. Like, have at it. You want to fucking kill me? Go right ahead. I will sacrifice my fucking throat. For the cause. Because I think it's time for the white person to go. I'm the most racist person towards my own culture. And towards my own fucking color. I've ever seen in my life. And fucking nobody accepts this shit. Everybody's so fucking blind to it. Because they haven't traveled like I have. They haven't lived in the fucking countries that I've, I've lived in. And they haven't taught fucking world history. And they don't know what I fucking know. They just think I'm crazy. Because like. They're fucking ignorant. Because they think white people are better than everybody. And if you're watching this video and you're fucking like one of those people, then like, I don't know what to tell you, man. I really don't know what to tell you. And there's plenty of people out there, white people that are nice people. But like, in the overall scheme of things throughout world history, for the last 2,500 2, years, 3,000 years, <clears throat> you look at what has happened. And then you can say, well, look what happened in Asia. Look at the Mongols. Look at the, you know, look at, look at the Chinese. Look at the Japanese. You know, a lot of what's happened in the last hundred years, it's just, it's just a back and forth feud for power. Everybody's scared of each other now. You know what happened in World War II with the Japanese? They were just scared of white people. They were just scared of us. Whether it was the Germans, the Americans, whoever the fuck. There's too many fucking problems right now, man. That's why I focus on nature. That's why I just fucking go outside. I just... I just want to be around my trees and my rabbits and my squirrels and... my birds. <sighs> Shit's getting really bad these days, man. It's getting really fucking bad. I can't even fucking hear about it anymore, man. And I'm just spitting everywhere. And everybody just wants to see the positive side of things. They want to think everything's hunky-dory. Shit's not hunky-dory, man. And, like, you can't keep being cute. Shit ain't cute no more, man. And that's not even going into the environmental shit. The hurricanes, the natural disasters. Watch the Leonardo DiCaprio UN speech. That shit will wake you the fuck up. Alright, yo. Have fun, you. Yeah. And uh, sorry to depress you if I did. I hope you're having a good day.